Hello and welcome to another episode of Goa 365's Face to Face. Now, we are doing this, this, this today, normally we've done, I've done a lot of face to face with uh, very, very important, powerful, powerful people. But doing this particular episode for me personally is great pleasure because with me I have uh, Mr. Luisino Falero who has been a mentor to me, he has taught me a lot about politics in the years, in even in long time and he has been in politics, I don't know, for <laughs> centuries, <laughs> one of the icons of Goan politics. But today, he says he has become a writer. So anyway, for, let him give you all the details. Welcome sir, Luis yeah, yeah, Falero, yeah, yeah. welcome to our show. First time I think you have been uh, while I am here on face to face. Luis tell us now. You are a politician. Everybody knows you as a politician. Everybody knows you as a politician, as a, as a master politician, as a master strategist. The only other person who, two other people whom I could think two or three, who would, you know, people would like Dr. Billy or Babu Naik or, you know, Bowser. But you are at that level, the only. So, what is the shift? Suddenly you decided to write this book about uh, Konkani in the state. I am not saying it is not an important point, but Kidak, like suddenly, how did you? decide to get into that? Very, very important question which everybody is asking me. The battle for Konkani and statehood or the battle for the twin aspirations of Goa and Goans, according to me, post-liberation, because I am a product of post-liberation, is the biggest movement in the history of Goa which Goa has never witnessed or Ill will ever witness in the future. So this movement for the twin aspirations to make Konkani the official language and statehood has to be recorded and has to be given to the posterity. So I thought of writing this book. The second reason why I decided to write this book because I remember during the Konkani movement Thousands of people have suffered. Yes. They have suffered police atrocities. They have suffered police lattes. They have suffered police imprisonment. They have some suffered even bullets, gave their blood, gave their life and became the martyrs for the cause of Konkani. So this book is dedicated for all these people, including all others who have contributed to get these twin aspirations of Goa and Goans, Konkani and statehood. The third reason I thought is uh, today everybody is asking me, what is this Konkani movement? What is this uh, official language movement? What is the statehood movement? Everybody has forgotten. Many have forgotten, not everybody, many. Uh, many people who were actively involved are no more unfortunately Correct. with us. That's true. That's true. And those who are there, they are asking me that you have to write because you are the person who was involved in this. And I remember, yes, when I got elected in 1980. So how many terms, uh, just to interrupt, sorry, how many terms as MLA? Seven terms. <laughs> seven terms. <laughs> Only seven terms. <laughs> <laughs> because two terms I was in Delhi the helping the party ah, correct, at the national correct. level and uh, God has been very kind to me. So <laughs> there also I could bring so many states under the Congress and all that. So uh, important is we have to tell this. This is this is an important part of the Goa's history and a proud history. Yes. So. I feel that this history has to be written in the letters of gold and, and given to the posterity, especially the younger generation, who is the future of tomorrow. True. Before I get into the statehood, everybody says, but today you find this uh, slowly people are forgetting uh, the language or people are uh, feeling ashamed to speak the language. Is that happening or people? No, I, I, I will tell you one thing, Goa, Konkani language, official language, statehood is 
part of our ethos, culture and history. Those who don't know their history, they don't know themselves. So even if we feel today people are forgetting, it is our duty to bring them back to the roots. Absolutely. Because one thing I'll tell you, and this is what I used to say, Konkani is a language of Goa's unity. Whether you are a Hindu, you are a Christian or a Muslim, they speak Konkani. And at that time I used to say, and I, I'm still saying it, as long as there is uh, blood in your body, Konkani language will survive and will prosper. But one thing I am telling you, the greatest benefit after getting Konkani as an official language in the statehood is what I used to, because I used to travel length and breadth of Goa. And uh, I used to tell them, once we get the official language, we will bring necessary legislation mm. to protect the interest of Goans, especially in employment. Okay, <coughs> and I am proud to say point. that. Yeah, yeah, I want to bring this point specifically. But anyway, since you brought it up completely. I am proud to say that after the official language, as a Minister for Employment, I brought a series of legislations and notifications. Thereby, the knowledge of Konkani, I made it compulsory for registration in the employment exchange. I made it compulsory for employment and I also made it compulsory for in the private industries. But unfortunately, those notifications where I said 80% jobs should go to the Goans, thereafter was the subsequent governments changed it and today we find that a lot of Goans are idle, unemployed. At the same time, a lot of people have come from outside. And, and uh, deprive our people of... Uh, okay, I want to specifically talk now, since you, you, you've you brought it up uh, about Konkani, linking it to, to, to the language. Now, uh, Luzin Bab, people, lot of people in Goa, and forget unemployed, businesses in Goa are being controlled by people who have come in from outside. Lot of our, our, our Goans, lot of people who can afford to, who have the uh, opportunity, who have the ability, they are leaving the state. You talk about, see, Goa, there is pharma, in, uh, top industries you talk. You talk about hospitality, you talk about pharma, you talk about the industrial estates. So you don't find many Goans. You forget why at that level. You talk about the fish market. Even in the fish markets, the, there are no Goans. So where is where is the this employment issue? See, the government is, is doing its part. I feel it's doing its killing, it's doing X, it's doing Y, it's doing, it's doing. But actually, is this helping? Is this helping? Why is this total? Forget about jobs. I'm not looking at government jobs. All Goans want to go for government jobs. Even. But businesses, most of the businesses are not happening. Goans are not getting into that. There are people who are coming from across the border and starting a business. They are succeeding. Do you feel that this is a problem? And did you foresee this? earlier when you brought in those notifications? I'll tell you, when I was first elected in 1980, mm. I used to shout at the at that time. Uh, Loya Maidan and even in the assembly, Gunch Empregad Baile, Mamladar Baile, BDO Baile, Deputy Collector Baile, Collector Baile, Director Baile, <laughs> IS Officer Baile, Goinkar Mele or Goin Sudun Galkam. And I remember our chief minister at that time used to say, we have sown by the constitution, you cannot differentiate. And I could see at that time, besides those employees who came from the Portuguese this, mm. others there were only two ones. One is Mr. Kesh Kamat and one is Mr. Carvalho in the civil service. <laughs> besides <laughs> that, there were no ones. No. <laughs> Today, after I brought the employment policy, yeah. I implemented 80% of the policy. And one of the important thing is that to reserve jobs to the Goans, I brought the knowledge of Konkani and 15 years domicile compulsory. Uh, that was you when you were industries minister? I was industries and uh, employment minister. Okay. Well, and employment. So I brought those notifications and today when I go around, I see young BDOs, young Mamladars, Goan. young deputy collectors Goan. from Goa. Correct. I feel very proud and happy. Okay. But that is not all. That time I made 15 years domicile. Mm. Today you <laughs> have to think in a different way. I was, whenever I come outside the industrial state, I look, it is impossible to see any go on there. 
you go to the railway station have you been there <laughs> no, not really. every day 500 people from outside are coming to goa what to work they are coming not to remain unemployed they are coming because there is a employment potential here so there is a mismatch on the one hand our people are highly educated our people are uh, well qualified at the same time we have created employment so much that we cannot you know the harness the employment potential which we have created with the result that we have got lakhs of people who are coming from outside and we have got one and a half lakh goans who are unemployed and they are running away from goa they are losing their this so now it is a high time therefore i said i did employment policy i did industrial policy i did education policy i did iit policy but today policies are not enough you have to go on a mission mode see people like me who have got an experience people like you who have got an experience have to pull together and see how can we have a better goa and uh, this is my first book yes this won't be the last book <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah but wait let me pause you on this so as to say now it's fine i'm sure writing books is, is good no doubt and it's needed especially konkani statehood and all is good and your next book will be on what are you planning on it Uh, like uh yeah it's a good question uh as i have told you i brought employment policy industrial policy yeah. educational policy housing policy it policy today they are talking of bringing agricultural policy uh. now just simple question hmm. as a agriculturist as a farmer when you go to sell your coconut to bagyaddar they buy it at the rate of rupees 3 per coconut and they sell it at the rate of 25 30 rupees then what is the point in getting into agriculture so so making policies is not enough you hmm. have to go on a mission mode you have to i am not talking of only employment you have to help the farmer business and how you get the young people in farming maybe you will have to bring a, a, a series of mechanization or semi mechanization mm -hmm. the department of agriculture will have to go to the fields and help them and i'm sure a lot of people are there i had asked this question in the parliament uh, what is the total area under paddy fields and how much paddy fields are grown they don't have the figures mm -hmm. they said goa government doesn't have figures so we don't know where is our kazan lands they are all destroyed agriculture is destroyed so we have to bring back to action our forefathers have painstakingly preserved and and improved the technology today the technology is much much higher at the at the world level so bring the technology and bring our fields back fair enough luisenba but agriculture does not pay it does not make money so why will a youth who's who studied who's done his graduation today his parents have slogged send him to college why will he go into a business because basically you're talking about a business agriculture is a business whatever it's a job or a business where is not going to make money i why i I, i beg to disagree to, with you okay when you talk of a farmer you say poor farmer in no, no no i'm not saying poor farmer. i'm saying but when you we, talk in america if you say poor farmer they will laugh at your ignorance <laughs> <laughs> everybody wants to get uh, married to the farmer's daughter because farmer is rich there <laughs> so so uh, any field whether i just gave you an example of agriculture because okay. government of goa is trying to do a policy on He's that he's talking about it yeah but uh, in any field in 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 any field i think our people have done much better all over the world you see we have produced so many mps in uk yes <laughs> correct we have got at least two three goans who are ministers there correct and so many councillors we though. have produced the prime minister of portugal <laughs> yes not once he was a president of portugal <laughs> also we have produced mps all over the world but we have not done well in the state of goa in the place of our birth why this is a question why goans have not done well in goa and they have done well all over the world if a goan can become a prime minister of portugal for so many terms now why can't goans shine up in the state of goa you have asked a very good question industries employment business enterprise trade 
You see, what we are doing, we have got one university, which is a state university. University is preparing only graduates. You know something, that Goa could be a center of excellence. We have got NIO. We have got Antarctic Center. We have got uh, Security and Safety Center at Bithul. We have Beats. We have uh, How? NIO. Why we are not integrating this with the university? I have asked uh, a question in the parliament. Okay, this time. Why don't we have our own university in Goa? We have got only state university. Why Every state mm -hmm. has got central, central one or two universities. Why don't we have a central university? Mm -hmm. Why don't we have a s university which will produce graduates who can be directly employed? Skill training. In my employment policy, I had mentioned about uh, employment, manpower development, sale, uh, human resource development. These now they are talking after forty years about this skilling. But even skilling that is being done at a very basic level. It's no, not but skilling has to be done so that if there is somebody in among the youth, Look, mm. he has to be given the skills so that he has got the confidence of taking over very very important positions and this is a very good question and i think we should we should try to do something in this way okay uh, luizin bab now uh, we have this is policy what you are talking about implementation and all that now i will get into a sort of see ultimately all these things however much we can talk ultimately this implementation this planning this policy is done by politicians like so you have so many ideas, you have so much experience. So, have you? are you done with politics? Are you out <laughs> for good? <laughs> because for the past one year since we have like your resignation, which uh, mainly you are informed, after that you have, uh, you are writing your book as you say. No, so no, but uh, by my, want, my next generally. book will be very, very important book. Okay, fair enough. But you are, you are dodging my question. Uh, are you no, uh, right now, you know, uh, when I resigned as a member of parliament, I felt, Why? It Why is, did you? I felt it's not tenable for me to continue as a member of parliament from West Bengal okay. and raising issues about Goa. I raised 40 <laughs> and odd issues <laughs> during one year. Okay. I think you must be aware about yes. that. Yeah. And uh, I like that job. I wanted to raise the issues because you can help the government of the state okay. At the same time, there is so many schemes, center and state coordination. This, but being a member of parliament from Rajya Sabha and, and uh, from West Bengal, I thought it was not tenable. So we have to have somebody here who can really represent the. We have three MPs. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, MPs. and I don't want to criticize anybody and all that. <laughs> but there must be a coordination, okay. irrespective of your political this. Okay. But right now, I will definitely support a party. But let me see at this moment uh, what uh, and how we we should this. And let us harness our experience. No, no, I am not putting you into a spot. I am not saying which party. What yeah, I am yeah. saying is your experience, your, your thing. I know, of course, I am sure you will write not one, two, maybe even more books. But with your experience and with your acumen and with your knowledge, are you getting out of politics completely? Are you going to take a sabbatical, so as to say? No, I, I can <laughs> tell you, you. I can tell you right now. I am not in any political party, but yeah, uh, I'm not saying Indian join. politicians they don't retire; they die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think this is a, this is this is like journalists. They never retire. <laughs> so they don't retire. They only about. retire when they die. Therefore, <laughs> I said they don't retire; they die. I <laughs> see. I'm not asking. You, did I ask you which which political party you are supporting? No, I'm not saying. I'm just asking you whether you. Have you are done with politics. You are given up with politics. No, but I, I think you answered the question. I don't think you need to, <laughs> to go any further. I am not asking you any party. That is not what I meant. What I am saying is that Goa needs uh, people with experience, with acumen and all. That is my, my main reason as you were talking about mission mode. My main reason is that we need people in, in different capacities. That was my point. So anyway, now uh, Luizin Baba has answered this question. So I will tell you one thing. Now you have seen Goa from, you have been in MLA since 80s. Before that also you have been in the union, you, you worked in industry. How has Goa changed <laughs> from that time to now? And where do you see Goa in maybe no, 5 years, 10 years? Unfortunately, I am not very happy with the state of affairs. The way it is going. The way it is going. Okay. Just like India is young, Goa is young. Very young. 65% yes. of the population are below the age of 45. And we have to get this young population 
back in the in in the in the this of progress in, and this must be part of the progress and part of the development so i'm so happy that you are also thinking on those lines i am also thinking of the lines let us put our our heads together our experience together when i uh, when i did the employment policy i implemented it Correct. when i did the industrial policy i implemented that it that i think is the crux implementation when i brought different policy education policy i brought 50 and odd schemes interventions to improve the quality of education people may rem remember only giving cycles to the <laughs> girls and <laughs> all that but yeah, yeah. i brought ncert yeah, syllabus was, uh, yeah. for the first time in the in the in in, in the state of goa so we have to work on a mission mode and all of us have to pull together we can't say this is happening this is bad we have to be uh, fault is of the government you yeah. cannot just leave it like that i can't, agree with you, you can't leave, I, agree, yeah. I agree and and people like you who have got experience in this line people like me and others who have experience in this line have to work and i am i have started i told you after i resign i was uh, unemployed <laughs> That's a nice way. Of Idle thinking. man is a devil's <laughs> workshop. So I have done this first book, the battle for Konkani and statehood. The okay. second book, where I am applying my mind very, very uh, in detail, will be for a better Goa. In different areas, where I can put my mind, I'll put it and I'll bring it. Let us debate and discuss. If you have to tear me to pieces, do it. But let us come out with a good uh, policy. for the future absolutely see because i also feel like see goa has got i mean of course there are naysayers and uh, detractors and whatever but i also feel that uh, goa has a has a very bright future and goans are very very capable it's not that they are not they are, as you you only said and as i know and as everybody knows we go outside and we shine so why can't we do it here because we have so much of and like it's not that like people are coming from outside goa and in goa they are doing very well they are doing very very well goa is like dubai to many people from the north and wherever they come here and they like you know so you are absolutely right it, that is the that is the the need of the hour now so again let me before i close where do you see goa in the next 5 years or 10 years we have to change it what like what we have to change the the thinking process mm. we have to change the situation which is at present but you are positive uh, that it can be done it has to be done you're not positive it has to be done we have no other way otherwise people will say goa is dying mm. and we are a dying race it should not happen just change of mindset or more people getting involved in various issues of the state getting more involved because goans like you know they like unfortunately no just like i mentioned agriculture we are destroying our forest we are destroying our trees we are destroying our ecology we are destroying our environment here in the example when i say battle for konkani and statehood when goans came together things got done they started the movement it was biggest movement maybe we require not not uh, this but very peaceful movements to change the situation and restore what god has given us fair enough so uh, this was uh, luisin bab talking about goa and is from what i get from him is his optimism about what uh, goa can be the its possibilities are there this is something that i totally share because i know there are a lot of naysayers in the state today saying no no it's over it's done whatever but i more optimistic yes And, but what I agree with Lee Zimbabwe also where he says is that yes we don't have a choice we got to do something and and probably quickly thanks uh, thank you Lee thank you thank so you much. very much it was It's nice been, uh, was pleasure nice, yeah. uh, after such a long time to come and uh, talk to you and hopefully we can do something for us I am always there I'm I'm like very much a, a Goan and an Indian very strong and uh, very disabled now this one Lee Zimbabwe Falero uh, giving us what an idea he has about Goa. and is optimistic the way i also am about this particular thing hopefully we will be able to uh, take goa to heights and hopefully we will see more of uh, mr luisinho i want to see him very much in politics because the way he works as a politician is brilliant just just before i end uh, he has been in the congress party for uh, 
a large part of his his uh, political career and him as the president is the only time that the congress ever got a majority in the state <laughs> so this is something that uh, the political acumen and all and, and and at that time the congress was the congress is own worst enemy <laughs> so as to say he didn't need any of the opposition party i know because i've been following following politics for a very very long time very interesting thank you again thank you and keep watching goa 365 <laughs>